The question is one democracy is always asking of itself. Of the many things we can do to democracy, says a man I know, the worst is the indignity of taking it for granted. Some people think all the constant self-examination loosens our unity as a people, but I prefer the counsel of Sidney Hook, who said that in contrast to totalitarianism, democracy can face and live with the truth about itself. In the quiet precincts of scholarship, Sheldon Wolin wrestles with the meaning of democracy, the nature of power, and the role of the state. But his insights as a political philosopher are also drawn from the noisy streets where theory confronts the realities of American life. Wolin was teaching at the University of California at Berkeley in the 1960s, where he witnessed and wrote about the student movement. Later, at Princeton, he founded and edited a journal called Democracy. Shortly before he left for a year's teaching in Japan, I caught up with Sheldon Woolen at the Clark Library at the University of California in Los Angeles. Let's, uh, let's start with the past for a moment. You were at Berkeley doing the demonstrations, the radical politics of the, of the 60s. What do we have to learn today, good or bad, from the 60s? I think a lot. Uh, I think it's easy to both romanticize the, the 60s as well as to denigrate it. If I were to, I think the one thing that I come away with uh, really is, it seems to me, the whole question of a, of a participatory understanding of politics, meaning by that the wide range of groups and peoples who are now involved in politics in America that never would have really reached that level of, of political consciousness, that that's very much the legacy of the 60s. I think power that, to the people, that sort of right, slogan. Yeah. And, the, and the decentralization of power and the notion of power is shared and the notion of political activity involving collaborative activity. Do you think that the expectations raised by the 60s, the expectations of democratic participation, power to the people, have been largely disappointed, frustrated? I think to some degree they have been. I, and I think the re, the, one clear way in which they have been or that has caused them to, uh, the frustration, I think has to do with what again, doesn't receive the kind of press it needs to, and that is the question of, this, of the growth, the continuous, consistent growth of centralized power in, in, in our society. People think of Ronald Reagan as, a, as, as an opponent of state power and as, a, as someone who uh, wanted to get government off our backs and the rest of the campaign rhetoric. But actually, one of the legacies of the Reagan era is a stronger state a, state, a state that doesn't do as much in terms of regulation of the economy as the, as the states growing out of the New Deal, uh, Fair Deal kind of, uh, kind of tradition, but a state which in terms of defense, in terms of the protection of American interests abroad, in areas such as the advancement of technology or the law and order uh, state, all of those involve extensions of, Amer of, of, of national power. Is this for better or worse? I think it's for worse. I think it's for worse because it's been accompanied, as we know, by an incredible amount of apathy on the part of the American electorate in terms of the simple fact of voting. It's, it, it is a less, a less alert, a less involved electorate at, na at the national level. So the national government becomes stronger, but the participation, knowledge, and, and, and involvement of the people diminish it. Absolutely. And at the same time, it's becoming much more of a surveillance and control state in terms of the way that it, uh, that it intervenes in, knows about, pries into individual lives. Growing out of what you just said, this will strike as a very simplistic question, but, but I need to ask it. Do we have a democracy? It isn't a simplistic question, and the answer is, uh, I think we don't. Uh, I don't think the idea of democracy and the idea of a strong state, centralized, inherently bureaucratic and administrative in its structure and orientation, that those are compatible notions. I think democracy does imply involvement, shared power, dispersed power, and above all, a significant equality. And I think state power means the opposite of those things. And similarly, I think the democracy clearly is at odds with corporate structures and the power of corporate structures. Hierarchy. Exactly. And also power that's unaccountable, power that, uh, that basically yeah. is, is, is unresponsive uh, and is concerned with other things, bottom lines, profit margins, and the rest. 
Don't we, in fact, have a, a rather thinly concealed power structure of large public institutions and private corporations? I think the most important developments in the last 25 years or so has been the, the closer integration and intertwining of those two dominant structures of power, economic and political power. I think one of the interesting aspects of that, you know, is this push towards so-called privatization of public functions now, where private corporations are now encouraged to take over what used to be regarded as public functions, whether it be education, medical care, hospital care, or, or again, a whole range. Prisons. I, think, I mean, you're, yeah, prisons, you get the government exactly. contracting with uh, corporations but to build prisons, and run prisons. Sure. Or but what does all that say to you? That it says to me not what I think people are saying. It says most people think that means what you're seeing is a decentralization of government power and that, you're, and that you're dismantling the state. And I think that's absolutely wrong. I think what it means is an extension of, 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 of power which now is not coming from the state but is coming from a co combination of public and private uh, power concerted. The best example, again most recent example, would be uh, drug testing where you begin to talk about public employees in sensitive positions and before long private industry is into the same game talking about drug testing its employees and the result is that you've got a common network of control and surveillance and, and pressing into the private lives of people that's a combination of both forms of power, neither one nor the other.